All right, hello again. So here we are with the sixth video of sequences. Now, um, here what we're going to talk about today is to find the sum or the total of a geometric series. So in a series, you're going to have um, a bunch of terms being added together. That's why we're finding the sum of them. And you're really going to have pretty much like a starting point and a stopping point. Okay, you, want, you may want to find the sum of the first 10 terms or the sum of the first five terms. This is the formula we're going to use. Okay, and everything stands for what it did in, throughout the packet. A sub 1 is equal to the first term. R is the common ratio, what we're multiplying to get from one term to the ne uh, next. And N stands for the number of terms, okay, the term that we're on. Actually, there is something new, this S. This, this stands for the sum of the first n terms, okay, s sub n, the sum of the first n terms. All right, I'd like you to read the first one on this page, number 35, and I think you can do it on your own. All they're really, all they're asking you to do is just take this info and plug it into the formula. Oh, and one other thing I want to point out that I haven't really mentioned yet. Luckily, I know that, you know, the reference sheet gives you barely anything on it for algebra 2, but in this unit, they give you this formula. It doesn't, you don't have to memorize it for the regions. And they also give you both explicit formulas, um, you know, that, we re, that we've been using earlier on in the packet. So the arithmetic explicit formula, as well as the geometric explicit formula. Okay, so luckily, here we go. There's something you actually don't have to memorize. Okay, so when you read this question, they said this was her salary in her first year. So this is A sub 1. So I just replaced the A sub 1 in the formulas with 33,000. Now, don't be tricked. She's earning a 4% increase. So since this is an increase, we're not multiplying by 0.04 because that would make the numbers go down if you multiply by a number less than 1. Here, a 4% increase means 1 plus 4%. So 1.04. So that's what I substituted in for the R. Now they wanted you to leave it in terms of N. So here, I just left this as an N. Okay, now on part B. Okay, what they wanted you to do was they wanted you to use this formula to find her total earnings. So the sum of her, for, of, you know, her earnings over the first 15 years. So here they're telling us that N, the number of years we're looking at is 15. So we're looking at the sum of the first 15 years. So all you have to do is replace this n with a 15 as well as this n with a 15. If you forgot to replace this n with a 15, just erase it and please do so. And then all you have to do is just plug this in your calculator. And to the nearest cent, you get $660,778.39. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Um, you know, the ones in, I feel like this, um, this part of the unit isn't as bad. You really just take what they give you and plug it into the formula above. So why don't you try 36 through, I would say 39. 36 through 39, see how you do, and then you could hit play. Okay, so um, in number 36, all right, I just kind of took a look at what they gave me here. And Jake wants to buy a car, and it says that in the first week, he's going to save two dollars so that's telling us a sub one equals two now the second week he was going to save five the third week 12.5 so if you couldn't figure out the pattern of what was going on here you could just in your calculator remember take any term so i took the first term i realized this was we weren't adding to get from one term to the next um so what i did was i took the second term and divided it by the first term and got 2.5 then i took the third term and divided it by the term in front of it and still got 2.5 Okay, and I did the same thing here. So what this is telling us is that 
we are multiplying by 2.5 in order to go forward, right? If we're dividing by 2.5 when we go backwards, wouldn't we be multiplying by 2.5 when we're going forward? So the R is 2.5. All right, and then um, we just want to know how much will he have saved in n weeks. So this is our formula, the this, this sum of the first n weeks. So we could just take the numbers and just plug them in. So a sub 1, we already said is equal to 2. So we could replace both of these with 2s. The r, we said, is 2.5. We want to leave it in terms of n, right, n weeks. And that's going to be over 1 minus r, which we said is 2.5. So let's see, if we look, this matches up with choice one. Uh, the only difference is they put the exponent, instead of it having it out here on the outside of the parentheses, they just put it on the inside of the parentheses, which is fine. It means the same exact thing. Okay, so um, if you want to see how you did here, it says that um, the seven-year lease for office space states that the annual rent is 85000 for the first year. So that's going to be our A sub 1. And it will increase by 6%. So remember, because it says increase, it's going to be, we're multiplying by 1.06 to get from one term to the next. And they want to know what will be the total, that's a keyword, I should underline that, uh, rent expense for the entire seven-year lease. So N equals 7. That's the number of terms we're going to look at. So I just plugged everything into our geometric series formula, okay? We're finding the sum of the first seven terms, and that's going to be equal to the first term minus the first term times r to the n power over 1 minus r. So all you have to do is just plug that in your calculator and see what you get. Okay, so when I plug that in, I get 713,476.20. Oop, that's supposed to be a zero. So that would match up with choice four. Okay, so for number 38, remember, you were supposed to have tried these already. That's why I'm just kind of writing everything out ahead of time so you could check your work. Okay, so he runs 15 miles for the uh, in the first week. So that's telling us A sub 1 is 15. Okay, then each week following, he runs 3% more. So it means we're multiplying, since it's 3% more, by 1 plus 3%, by 1.03 to get from one week to the next. And then total is telling us that we're going to be using our geometric series formula because the series formula takes the sum of the first however many terms in a sequence. Um, and they want us to do that for the first 10 weeks. So n, the number of weeks we're looking at, is 10. All right, so now let's just plug those numbers into our formula. Okay, so um, we're finding the sum of the first 10 terms. I replace the n's with tens. The first term is 15, and the r is 1.03. So I just replaced everything in the formula. Here's where it goes. And then they want you to plug this in your calculator and round it to the nearest thousandth. So tenths, hundredths, thousands, three decimal places. Um, another thing, please remember to put your units, right? Like in the last question, they were talking about money, so we put the dollar sign. That was our units. In this question, we're talking about miles, so be sure to always write that out. Okay, so um, I'm going to just go through this one step by step. So in number 39, Brian deposited one cent into an empty non-interest bank account on the first day. So since that happened on the first day, A sub 1 just put it over here, is equal to one cent. If we had one penny, wouldn't we write that as 0 0.01? Don't just write one, because one would mean one dollar. Okay, um, he then additionally deposited three cents on the second day, nine cents on the third day, and 27 cents on the fourth day. So basically what he's doing is he's multiplying by three to get from one day to the next. So that's telling us that R equals three, right? He's tripling the amount each day. All right, then what would be the total amount, so we're looking for the total, of money in the account at the end of the 20th day? So that's telling us that N equals 20, if this pattern continued. Okay, so let's just plug these numbers into our formula. 
All right, so here we go. We're looking for the sum of the first 20 terms. Here's a sub 1. Here's r. And again, our n is 20. So let's just plug that in the calculator and see what we get. All right, so I am getting 17433922 All right, so it looks like that is choice two. All right, now um, number 40, I think number 40 is a little harder, um, but I think you should read it and try it on your own. If you get stuck, in this one they're giving us the first term and they're giving us the fourth term, they're not giving us those in-between terms, but they are telling us it's geometric. We did one like this in a packet already. Um, let me see. Yep, we did one like this. If you take a look at number 26, this should help you to get started. So try this one out and, um, you know, see how you do on your own. See if you could do it without help. And then you could hit play. Okay, so they're telling us that the first term is 8. So here's our first term. And then they tell us that the fourth term is 216. So we don't know the second term, and we don't know the third term, but we do know the fourth term is 216. Now, since this is geometric, what that means is we're multiplying to get from one term to the next. So whatever we multiply 8 by to get to the second term, we have to multiply that second term by the same exact thing to get to the third term, and we're going to multiply the third term by that same exact thing to get to the fourth term. Okay, so I, in my opinion, the easiest way to do this is if you don't know what you're multiplying by, just multiply by a variable, call it x. So 8 times x will give us the second term. The second term times x will give us the third term, and the third term times x will give us 216. So if we want to make an equation, basically we're going to do 8 times x times x times x equals 216. So I'm just going to write that out. All right, well, we know that x times x times x is x cubed. So we can rewrite this as 8x cubed equals 216. All right, so if we want to get the x cubed by itself, we can divide both sides by 8. So that gives us x cubed equals 27. And to get rid of, if we want to get rid of a square, we take the square root. If we want to get rid of a cube, we just take the cube root. So I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. And just to make a note, if you wanted to get rid of the cube, you could have also raised both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power. So you could have raised both sides of the equation to the one-third power. I find this easier, though, but, you you know, to each their own. You could do whatever you want. All right, so a cube, I'm sorry, a cube and a cube root cancel each other out, leaving me with just x. And then the cube root of 27 is just positive 3. Right, positive 3, so 3 times 3 times 3 gives us 27. All right, now let's think about it. What is this x actually representing? Like, why did we even solve for this? Well, basically what that was giving us is that if we take 8 and multiply it by 3, it's going to give us a second term. And if we take that second term and multiply it by 3, it's going to give us a third term. And if we take the third term and multiply it by 3, it's going to give us this fourth term of 216. So x is what we're multiplying by to get from one term to the next. So don't we call that r, right, our common ratio? So now we know r is equal to 3. Now we also knew that the first term was equal to 8. So a sub 1 equals 8. And they want us to find the sum of the first 12 terms. So n is going to be equal to 12. All right, so if we want to find the sum of the first 12 terms, we're just going to use our geometric series formula. So the sum of the first 12 terms is going to be equal to the first term minus the first term times r to the n power. And that's going to be over 1 minus r. All right, so now all you have to do 
is just plug all of this in your calculator and see what you get. All right, so let's see. When I plug it in my calculator, I am getting 2,125,760. So that would be choice three. Okay, so to make sure that you're really getting everything out of these that you can, I mean, with math, you have to try it on your own. So, um, and you know, you might get some things wrong, but that's okay. That's how you learn, all right? You don't learn just by watching a video. You learn by trying it and then seeing how you did it and making your corrections. All right, so I'd like you to try all the examples on this page and then hit play and see how you did. All right, number 41 was tricky, and I bet some of you actually chose choice four, which if you did, I can see why you did that, but it's actually not the answer, so let's go through and see why. All right, so if she put $100 into a savings account each month, in her first month, she would have $100. And then I'm going to jump to the end for a minute. They want to know how much will she have after one year. Well, since she's putting it in every month, wouldn't one year be 12 months? So we're going to look for how much she's going to have in the end after 12 months. So N, the number of months we're looking at, is 12. Now, I think this is the part that may have thrown people off. Or maybe it didn't. Maybe you got it, which would be awesome. If the account pays 3% annual interest compounded monthly, this word is key. It's telling you you have to use your compound interest formula. Now, if you recall the compound interest formula, I'm going to, I mean, this is from earlier on in the year. This is our compound interest formula. Oop. So, within the parentheses, it's not just 1 plus the rate. It's not just going to be 1 plus 0.03. It's 1 plus the rate divided by N. N stands for the number of compounds per year. So if something is compounded monthly, it's going to be compounded 12 times a year. This N, we're going to have to replace with a 12. So this is going to be, in parentheses, 1 plus the rate of 0 0.03 over 12. And if you plug this into your calculator, 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 12, it gives you 1.3. Zero, zero, two, five. So this right here is our common ratio. That's what we're going to be multiplying by to get from one term to the next. Okay, so now if we look at our formula, I mean, you could write it out or you could just look. S sub 12, right? 12 is the number of months, would be equal to the first term of 100 times R which is 1.0025 to the n power, which is 12. And that would be over 1 minus r. So here, choice 2 was our answer. Okay, number 42. Let's see how you did on that one. A ball is dropped from a height of 32 feet. So the first, so a sub 1, our first term, is going to be 32. It bounces and rebounds 80% of the height from which it was falling. So here, it's only maintaining 80% of its height. So on each bounce, it's going to be at a lower and lower height. So R would be equal to, you write 0.80 or 0.8. It doesn't matter. They mean the same thing. If you prefer, so it looks like 80 because this says 80, that's up to you. Whatever you want. All right, so what is the total downward distance to the nearest foot? So they want us to add to the nearest whole number the ball traveled up to, I guess, on the 12th bounce. So this would be the end. This is the number of bounces that we're looking at. Okay, so let's just plug it in our formula. All right, so the sum of the first 12 bounces, well, the downward distance would be the first downward distance times 0.80 times r to the 12th power. And then it's over 1 minus r. So when we plug this in our calculator, Again, remember, we're rounding to the nearest foot. This rounds to 149 feet. All right, so that's your answer. And again, just remember, don't forget to put the units, okay? We always put our units. Okay, and then number 43. Given the geometric series, so they give us this series. They tell us it's geometric. So what they're telling us is we're multiplying to get 
from one term to the next. Now we could see here that the first term is 300, so I'm gonna just write out a sub one equals 300. And since it's geometric, it means we're multiplying to get from one term to the next. So we need to find the common ratio. Well, we've already done this a bunch of times throughout this packet. You could take any term, so 360, and divide it by the term in front of it, 300. When you do, you get 1.2. All right, let's try it for another one. Let's take 432 and divide it by the term in front of it. And when we do, we also get 1.2. So R, our common ratio, is 1.2. Okay, so the first thing they want us to do here is it says to write a geometric series formula S sub n. So they want us to leave it in terms of n for the first n terms. All right, so we could do that. So that would just be S sub n would be equal to the first term minus the first term times r to the nth power over 1 minus what we know r to be. So this would be the answer to the first part. Okay, then it says to use this formula to find the sum of the first 10 terms. So they're telling us that in this case, n is equal to 10. So they want us to just replace all the n's, or both n's in this formula, with 10. All right, so we get s sub 10 equals, and let's just rewrite exactly what we see, but replace the n with a 10. Okay, and now we can just plug all of this into the calculator and see what we get. And it says here to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we wind up getting 700 and, I'm sorry, 7,787. And then to the nearest tenth, that would be 0.6. So that is the sum of our first 10 terms to the nearest tenth. Okay, and then uh, number 44. This is the last one we're going to do today, but again, just like all the rest, before you watch how I do it, I'd like you to try it on your own. Okay, so I'm going to just outline the important information. So her first piece is 100 inches. So A sub 1 is 100. Um, 80 inches for the second piece, 64 for the third, and so on. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to figure out, I mean... You could see it's not going down by a consistent amount. So chances are we're multiplying to get from one term to the next. So if we want to figure out what we're multiplying by, you can work your way backwards and divide. If we do 80 divided by 100, that would give us 0.8. If we do 64 divided by 80, that would also give us 0.8. So really what that's telling us here is that our R, just write it over here, is equal to 0.8. Okay, it's getting smaller each time. That's why we're multiplying by a number less than 1. Okay, so assuming this pattern continues, write an explicit equation for a sub n, the length of the nth piece. All right, now, so they want, they don't want us to use the sum formula here. They want us to use the explicit geometric formula, which, if you recall, this, I'm going to just put the r in parentheses. This is our explicit geometric formula. All right, so let's just plug in the numbers we have. So a sub n, they want us to leave it in terms of n, would be equal to the first term times r, which we said is 0.8, to the n minus 1 power. So that's all they were looking for in this first part. That wasn't so bad. Now in the next part, it says Sanja has only, I'm sorry, Sanja only has 40 feet of wire to use for her project and wants to cut 20 pieces in total for the mobile using her pattern. Will she have enough wire? Justify your answer. Okay, so she wants to cut a total of 20 pieces. So the number of pieces she needs is 20. So this is telling us that n equals 20. Now, here's the deal. I mean, if you read this closely, this is all in inches. And then all of a sudden, they turn to feet. So she has 40 feet of wire to use for her project. So why don't we convert 40 to inches? 40 feet to inches, that way we'll see how much how many total inches she has, because everything else is in inches. So to convert from feet to inches, well, there's 12 inches in one foot, so let's just multiply by this, this by 12, and that will mean she has 480 inches of wire to use for her project. Okay, now, if we want to figure out the total 
the number of inches she will need for her project, we're going to have to use our sum formula, sum of a geometric series. We're going to have to do S sub n. Well, in place of n, we know that that's equal to 20. She's, there's going to be a total of 20 pieces. That'll be equal to the length of the first term, which is 100 inches, minus a sub 1 again, times r, which we said is 0.8, to the nth power, which we now know n is 20. And that'll be over 1 minus r, so 1 minus 0.8. All right, so let's plug this right here into our calculator and see what that's equal to. If it's equal to something less than 480 inches, then yes, she will have enough wire. If it's equal to something more than 480 inches, then she's not going to have enough wire. All right, so when we plug that in, we get... Hmm. approximately 494, I'm just going to round up a little. You can round to whatever you want, but what you could see here is this is bigger than 480, so she is definitely not going to have enough wire for her project. All right, so now we just have to write this out in words. All right, so let me give myself a little room. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I just wrote no. Sanja will not have enough wire for the project. She would need approximately 494.24 inches, or whatever you decided to round to, that's up to you, but only has 480 inches of wire. All right, so it's not enough.